Hey, what's up guys? Paulo Munoz here from ZeroGuides.com and welcome to the second video on my favorite features of ZeroGuides 2021.6. Point two update. So in this video, I'm going to show you the mesh to mask uh, brushes. Uh, they're fantastic. I'm not going to use them all, but I'm going to give you a hint of how I'm, uh, I've used them and how I found them to be uh, really useful for my workflow and to create concepts and all of that. Um, so the one that I'm going to show you is this is just a sphere, by the way, just a poly mesh sphere. Uh, the one that I'm going to use is this uh, mesh balloon. This is fantastic to quickly generate concepts. So the idea is that these brushes, this mesh balloon, the mesh extrude, these meshes extrude pro depth, the mesh project, and the mesh splat. All of these ones basically insert meshes or, or create meshes based on the masking. So the most obvious way to show you this is obviously with the with the mesh balloon, because you can hold control. And now you see, as soon as I hold control to access my masking brushes, now I have the mesh balloon here. And I can hold control and drag. And when I let go, a new mesh is created or a new yeah, a new piece of, of geometry. And I can keep doing this fairly quickly and create something very, very complex um, for a you know for a concept. So that's the in essence that's the that's the basis of that brush. But I want to show you a couple of tweaks that you can make to that uh, mesh balloon brush um, that I found really really ha really handy to create concepts. So let's say that I want to create a quick um, character you know, sketch or, or the blockout for a character. This mesh balloon is fantastic for that. You can use the lazy mouse. So I'm holding control. Uh, the lazy mouse allows you to be more precise, but I prefer to be uh, quicker uh, creating those mo those volumes. So if I hold control and click on lazy mouse, I can toggle that off and that's just going to get rid of that sort of lazy mouse. And I can do things a little bit faster like this. Right. And the other thing for this brush is that it has depth, right? Uh, by the way, I'm using my custom UI, so I'm just going to mention where the lazy mouse is. That would be on the stroke palette. Lazy mouse, it is here. And this depth is under the brush palette depth, this one right here. So this is lighter and this um, this thumbnail. So what this does is allows you to embed the effect of this brush. So right now, if I hold control and do that, and then rotate to the side, you'll see that my starting point is kind of like in the middle and Sirius creates the kind of like the back and the front in a in a balloon fashion. That's why it's called the mesh balloon. But if I, let's say, hold control and push this down to minus 56 or something like that, let's do that on the other side. It does the same thing, but now it is embedding that um, that effect a little bit more in. So you can play around with the depth and that allows you to control a little bit more the, you know, how these things is placed. Oh, these things are placed. So let's go back. And I'm going to toggle symmetry on so that I can work both um, sides of the of the sculpture. And this will be kind of like the chest of my character and I can just hold control. Oh, by the way, one more thing. Let's set this back to zero. And if I go ahead and do something like this and before I let go I hold the shift key so I'm still holding control and now I'm going to hold shift and let go Sirius will place that right in the middle of the of the object right and this is really handy for this sort of setup right and if I do the same thing again but without holding shift it's going to be based on where I clicked first right that's because I don't have anything in the embed now that's pretty cool let's undo that so I'm going to do the chest holding control and holding shift. So that's part of it. Again, let me just undo that. Do it again. Hold shift. And you'll see that I left um, a hole in here. I did that intentionally because if I don't change or if I don't move my camera, I can hold control again, hold shift, and Zeroge will add to the last um, sort of stroke that I did. So I can keep doing this, hold shift, and I'm just adding to it. Right, so that's a very quick way to generate these meshes. As soon as I rotate and move my camera, if I try to do the same thing and hold shift, it's just going to add a new mesh in the middle or in the center. So I'm going to let's create some, some shoulders. I'm holding shift as well. Right, and then I'm going to do the same thing for some arms, holding shift, and some forearms. Maybe not like that. This is going to be pretty sketchy. Hopefully you'll get the idea. Let's do the same thing here, holding shift. Every time that I hold shift, it's just going to place it right in the middle. Uh, something for the hips. Holding shift again, just to add more. And let's do the legs. That's too skinny. 
right? It's gonna be some something stylized. You'll see that little gap in here. Uh, we can use the same technique, holding shift, oops, holding control first and shift because I haven't moved the camera. It will just add to that selection. Great. Now I'm gonna rotate the camera because everything is kind of like in the same sort of plane. Um, let's go ahead and add some some fit to this character, holding control and shift. Perfect. And the cool thing about this as well is that you can bring in the gizmo. Every time that you create a new balloon mesh, Sirius will mask out the rest. So I can bring in the gizmo and it will be centered to the unmask areas, in this case the fit, and I can just rep reposition them. All right, so that's a quick way to go about it. Let's clear that mask and let's actually create some, some fingers or something for this guy. All right, uh, maybe three fingers, but I'll show you how to do another one. All right, so we have the basis. Obviously, this looks horrible, <laughs> but it's just a quick way to get started so you don't have to think too much about the volumes, and then you can spend some time refining. So I'm going to um, jump into a time lapse where I'll show you how to refine this uh, very quickly. I just want to show you the tools that I'm going to use in that time lapse and how I go about it. So if I enable Polyframe, this switch right here, and I'm going to toggle off the line so you can see better, with every single mesh that I create, um, I have a new polyframe or a new a new ID for the for the mesh. So you can hold Control and Shift, click on the thumbnail of your brush, and select different um, you know selection brushes. So I'm going to use the Select Rectangular, and I have the Symmetry enabled. I can basically hold Control and Shift and click once to isolate. Control Shift and click and drag to invert the selection. So I can just let's say hide those uh, forearms. Then I can hold Control click once to mask that, bring back my selection, holding control and shift and click once. So I basically mask everything but the forms. So now I can bring my gizmo and holding the alt key or clicking on this unlock button, I can position that somewhere a little bit more useful, like the elbow. And I can rotate and basically play around with the proportions and the and the placement of this, right? To create kind of like an A shape of this character. Right? And that's the same way that I can create a new a new finger. Let's say uh, I want to move these ones closer. So let's click on that one. Hold Control, click once. Bring back everything, holding Control and Shift and click. And invert the mask, holding Control and click once. And now bring in the gizmo, center to the unmask areas, and I can just reposition this guy. This could be um, you know one of the one of the fingers. Um, another tool that you probably are aware of. Which is not is not a new thing, but if you have the the gizmo selected, you can hold Control, click and drag, and that would essentially duplicate whatever you have on mask in this case. All right, and I'm just gonna scale it a, a tiny bit more. Oh, because I use the I'm using symmetry, I have to enable local symmetry. That would be under the transform palette, local symmetry here for you, uh, and that allows you to sort of scale. Uh, based on the local symmetry of this object, not the, the center of the world. Um, let's just scale that a little bit. Let's make this a little bit more feature-like. All right. So I just wanted to show you that you, because you have that, you can easily manipulate and move things around. Uh, another cool method to, to work with this uh, or take advantage of these polygroups is using the move topological. So if I press the letter B on my keyboard, bring in the brush palette, then click on M for move, then click on T for topological. That would select the move topological, and that one would respect the topology. So I can just go ahead and do this, and you'll see even if I'm very close to the shoulder, it's not doing anything like that. So I can just go ahead and start manipulating these, these meshes right, to create whatever, whatever I don't know, whatever mesh I want to create, whatever volume I want to move. Um, but that's basically it, right? So I would use this brush quite a bit. Also, there is another tool that you can use in these move brushes, which is the AccuCurve. So if I go to the move, uh, to the brush palette, go to the curve and click on AccuCurve, that will give you a very pointy effect. Um, sometimes I find this handy, especially when I'm blocking things out, because it gives you a little bit more control over the, you know, pulling corners and, and angles. So, for example, if I want to insert this as kind of like the pictorial here, I can just push that in and it would work just fine. All right, so those are the tools that I'm going to use to very quickly tweak this, this base mesh and make it look a little bit more presentable than this and 
and then that's it. That's that's the that's the use of this mesh balloon. All right, so I'm gonna jump into a quick time lapse now. So something a little bit more decent than what we had before. Uh, still lots of work to do, but this is kind of like a, a good blocking to start sculpting and merging everything together. Uh, so just a couple more things in terms of workflow in case you want to take something like this uh, a little bit further, obviously. Uh, so for example, for things like, you know, these very thin areas and, and the legs, you can use something like the inflate brush. So B to bring in the palette, I for inflate and N to select the inflate brush and just inflate all of that. I'm using a very large brush so that is easier. Like that same thing with the fingers you can add a little bit more there and obviously with a smooth brush you can smooth everything out. Um, but yeah so this is just refinement of the of the sketch if you if you will. Um, but you know it's pretty pretty straightforward uh, in terms of workflow. Now obviously this needs <laughs> like I said this needs a lot more work. Um, but you have a good starting point. The other thing that you can do as well is use the move brush, the normal move brush, BMV, as well with AccuCurve. Um, and that allows you to move everything at once in case you wanna you know, further tweak everything together, not individual pieces, right? So I'm looking at, at the whole thing as a, yeah, as a whole. Um, so this looks very, very stiff to me. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on Unified just to make this a little bit smaller. So for units in zeros that can be uh, be more useful. There we go. Something something a little bit more interesting in terms of the pose. Um, and then of course you can dynamize the whole thing and keep refining it. Uh, so just one more thing. So at the bottom you see this is very rounded and obviously you might want to have some flat feet. Um, so you can use the gizmo, bring in the gizmo. Where is the gizmo? Let's see, oops, let's just reset the, the gizmo. I want to toggle the symmetry off, center. And if you click on this um, gear icon, you have the flatten modifier or the deformer. And that allows you to just click on this controller, push it up a little bit, and then you can define how much or how flat this area would be. Click on the gear icon again, accept. And if you go closer, now this is a perfectly flat area. So you can do that afterwards. I just want to show you where it is. And like I said, if you want to continue working on this and refine this a little bit further, you can go to the sub tool. I like to do this just because, I don't know, it's, it's, I'm used to this workflow, but I like to duplicate my tool and just keep this one as my original in case I want to go back and tweak the, the primary forms again. But the second sub tool is just a perfect duplicate of that. And I'm going to click on Dynamesh and basically I just merge everything together. If things like this are getting too too weird and you're getting these artifacts, that is just because of the, the resolution of the Dynamesh. So I'm going to hold Control and Z to undo that. Increase my resolution a tiny bit, maybe double that. And now we have a better result. And again, you can just enable symmetry. Hold the Shift key just to smooth things out a little bit. And now that you have this base, you can start refining as you would with any sculpture. So let's say the clay brush, or let's go for the BCB, clay builder brush. And that allows you to start, yeah, just sculpting and, and working on the volumes and refining things a little bit better. Uh, but again, that that is for another video. I think you get the idea. Um, the whole point was to show you the, the mesh balloon and those little settings that you can use to, to quickly create something like this, like a base, and then work your way up in, in, the, in the workflow, in the process of generating a cool looking character. All right, so I'm gonna leave this video here and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.